What's up guys and welcome to my budget CPU buyer's guide. It is spring 2020 and I don't think there's ever been a time when you could get this much power in a budget system. I'm focusing on the CPUs today, but full builds based on these parts can be assembled for around $350 to $600. The CPUs I'm talking about today are $50 to $150. I'm gonna start by going over the most important specs to look at and what they mean. And I have build guides linked in the video description down below to help you assemble your PC once you choose a CPU. So let's get started. Excellent. The Dark Core RGB Pro is a premium wireless gaming mouse from Corsair with a long list of features like an 18,000 DPI low power PixArt optical sensor for maximum precision with minimal power usage, attractive 9 zone dynamic RGB backlighting, and a comfortable contoured shape with two interchangeable side grips included. Connect wirelessly via Corsair's sub 1 millisecond slipstream technology, via Bluetooth for convenience on the go, or wired via USB C. Durable arm round switches, up to 50 hours of battery life, 8 fully programmable buttons, and more, so click the sponsor link in the description for details. So you might notice I only have AMD processors right here, so the question might come to mind, why am I only showing AMD processors right now? Why not Intel? There's a lot to be said about why, but I think the short answer boils down to three facts, price, performance, and upgrade path. I think AMD CPUs are more competitively priced than Intel's right now, and you typically get more cores and threads for your money. Because of those extra cores and threads, performance is usually better with AMD CPUs at the same price point. Gaming performance is the area where Intel still held the lead up until the launch of third gen Ryzen processors last year when AMD closed the gap with their 7 nanometer CPUs. To be fair, Intel has an upcoming launch of LGA 1200 motherboards and CPUs that are known as Comet Lake S. They're based on 14 nanometer manufacturing process, but they should be launching within a month or two. So that might slightly change the scenario depending on how those perform. The third reason though, is that AMD has been launching processors for the AM4 socket, that's a feature of the motherboards, since 2017. And they've done an admirable job of maintaining forward and backward compatibility. And they still have more Zen 3 CPUs set to launch for the AM4 socket later this year or so they tell us. This has led to some confusion, however, since there are so many CPUs that will slot into the same AM4 motherboards, and hence this guide. Let's refresh some of the basics, though, for anyone who has no idea what I mean when I'm talking about cores, threads, 7 nanometer, and a few of the other common PC terminologies. CPUs perform calculations, and to help them do more of them at a time, they have multiple cores. Think of each core as its own little processor with a queue of calculations to perform that it does in order. CPUs with more than one core were first introduced in the mid 2000s. Intel also introduced something called simultaneous multi-threading. They branded it hyper-threading on Intel CPUs. And that basically means that each core can have two queues of calculations lined up instead of one. So if you took a single core processor with hyper-threading and installed it and loaded Windows, Windows would see two cores, not just one even though physically there's still just one core. AMD now has its own version of hyper-threading or simultaneous multi-threading in their chips too. So if a chip has simultaneous multi-threading, SMT, you'll see a core count and a thread count, and the thread count will be double the core count. Remember though that SMT is not always an included feature. They remove it for some of the lower end CPUs, depends on the CPU. So sometimes you'll see a four core CPU with eight threads, meaning SMT is enabled. Sometimes you'll see a four core CPU with four threads, meaning no SMT. It's also worth pointing out that while multi-threading allows a single CPU core to behave as if it's two CPU cores, it's not gonna perform identically to a CPU with two physical cores. There is a little bit of drop off in SMT performance, but it is typically still much better than not having SMT. But it's not really just about how many cores and threads you have, there's also per core performance, often referred to as IPC or instructions per clock. How much work can a single core do in one clock cycle of the entire system? This is affected by many things like the CPU frequency and the architecture it's based on. But the upshot here is that better single core performance typically provides better gaming performance, which is often important to lots of people. While having more cores and threads is better for CPU heavy lifting tasks like video rendering and transcoding. Other than the CPU, the other important thing to consider in your overall system build is graphics. Even if you're not building a gaming PC, you need a video out option to send a signal over an HDMI or DisplayPort cable to your monitor so you can see what's on screen. AMD calls some of their CPUs APUs, which is a term that they made up, but it just means that the processor has integrated graphics. That means that with a motherboard that has video outs on the IO panel on the back, you can run the system with no graphics card. AMD's integrated graphics are actually pretty decent, 
can handle gaming at 720 or 1080 resolution, usually low to medium graphics settings for a decent frame rate. I consider them to be a good entry level option for a gaming system or just a video out solution for anyone who isn't really planning to game and doesn't want to buy a separate graphics card. But it's very important to remember that processors that do not have integrated graphics, which is most of the AMD Ryzen lineup, pretty much all the CPUs that don't have a G on the end of the product name will need a discrete separate graphics card in order for the system to function. For my money, I stick with APUs for the graphics up until the price point where you'd be spending about $125 or more on a graphics card. And at that threshold, you should go with a regular CPU with no integrated graphics and a separate discrete GPU. One more thing to cover before going over my list of CPUs is deciphering the terminology surrounding them. Let's start with that manufacturing process term. This is usually referred to with a measurement. Right now, most CPUs are manufactured with 14 nanometer, 12 nanometer, or seven nanometer process technology. Simply put, the measurement refers to the physical size of the elements the CPU is built from. Smaller is better here. Shrinking the manufacturing process technology typically results in more efficient processors. There is a lot more to this, but the important point is that AMD's first gen Ryzen CPUs, the 1000 series that launched back in 2017, like the 1600, 1700, and 1800 X, were based on 14 nanometer. They called the architecture for first gen, the design of the CPU cores themselves, Zen. And they used that Zen architecture across a lot of products, CPUs on the mainstream platform, as well as AMD's Epic server processors, but I digress. In 2018, they launched second gen Ryzen, the 2000 series like the 2600X and the 2700X. These were built using a 12 nanometer process that they called Zen Plus. And then last year in 2019, they launched third gen Ryzen, which is based on seven nanometer technology, which they called Zen 2. That should hopefully seem pretty straightforward, but one confusing twist to the naming scheme is with the APUs that AMD has come out with. The 2000 series APUs were not 12 nanometer Zen Plus products. The CPU cores in them were still 14 nanometer Zen cores. And again, with the 3000 series APUs like this 3400G, they used 12 nanometer Zen Plus cores in them rather than the seven nanometer Zen 2 cores that the rest of the 3000 series CPUs have. I wish they hadn't done that, but marketing departments like to take nice straightforward naming schemes and mix them up because I guess they think people are easily confused and that they won't watch a video like this that explains the difference between them. And I think that covers everything, although I did not go over motherboards, but that is probably a completely separate video. Just know that AM4 is the socket you're going for, B450 is the chipset you should go for if you're on a budget, and if you want support for PCI Express Gen 4, go for X570. There is going to be a B550, but that won't be out until June. Okay, just one more thing though. Two of the CPUs on this list, the Ryzen 3100 and 3300X, and these totally aren't them, I'm just using these as examples, are not actually available yet. They launch on May 21st, and while I typically don't recommend unreleased products, these use existing platforms, and their performance is pretty easy to suss out based on the existing performance of other 3000 series processors, so I'm comfortable pointing you in their direction. And now let's go over the CPUs. Starting with the super budget and entry level options, these are in the $50 to $60 range. If you are on a super serious budget, then every dollar counts, and that's why a $55 CPU might appeal to you. These will let you get your system up and running, and again, since all of these are AM4, you can buy this CPU now, and then you could upgrade it down the line. You could do that with pretty much any of these CPUs. I consider these entry-level APUs to be holdovers for anyone who wants to get a system built with the intent to upgrade to a higher-end CPU down the road. Or for anyone building a simple web browsing and super light gaming rig, you really don't need anything more than what these CPUs provide. So first on my list is a processor called the Ryzen 3 1200 AF and it's actually just come out, so it's not available everywhere, which is why we're looking at a Polish website right now. But this CPU should be available for about 55 to 60 US dollars. Now the original Ryzen 1200 launched back in 2017, and it was a 14 nanometer Zen chip. But much more recently, AMD relaunched it, but now it's built on 12 nanometer Zen Plus. So even though it's a 1000 series CPU, it really is a 2000 series under the hood. This is a four core, four thread CPU, and it doesn't have integrated graphics. So you will need to purchase a discrete GPU to go along with it, and that will add to the overall cost of your system. But it's also selling for about 
55 to $60, which is super, super cheap. This is a great deal for entry-level gaming, but you might need to hunt down an AF version of this CPU as they're not available everywhere. Case in point, I couldn't find it in stock anywhere here in the US, but pay close attention to the model name right here. It is this series of letters and numbers. The newer version is AF box, and that's why it's being known as the 1200 AF, whereas the older version is AE box. Next on the list is the Athlon 3000G, and this is a dual core CPU that does have SMT or simultaneous multi-threading enabled, so it has four threads, two cores, four threads. It's $55 if you can find it in stock, and it does appear to be in stock in Newegg right now. I do not recommend paying more than that for this CPU or for the 1200 AF uh, for that matter because there are better CPUs for a few more bucks that I'm about to talk about when I move on to the next section. The real nice thing about this one though is it does have integrated Radeon Vega 3 graphics. That makes this the go-to for a super budget build and while you can game on these integrated graphics, don't expect amazing performance. You're probably gonna need to play at lower resolutions with medium to low settings. But this is after all just a $50 CPU with a GPU included, so the bang for the buck is definitely there. Great starter processor, but if you do plan to upgrade in the future, you'll probably want to swap it out for at least a quad core. Let's move on to the mid-range of the budget CPUs. So we're looking at $85 to $100 price range, and you can get some serious power for your dollar in this price range, whether you want more cores and threads or any of the other things I'm about to mention. More cores and threads though, go for this CPU right here, the AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Again, this is an AF SKU. And look, you can tell I actually bought this and I did a build with it. Check it out, it's available on my YouTube channel. $85 in this case gets you a six core, 12 thread CPU. That's right, six cores and 12 threads for 85 bucks. Uh, like the 1200 AF, this is another CPU that was originally a 14 nanometer CPU based on the first Zen architecture, but AMD has re-released it using 12 nanometer Zen Plus. This is probably the best bang for the buck option right now, especially if you need the extra cores and threads for video processing or perhaps gaming and live streaming at the same time on the same system. But again though, you will need to buy a discrete GPU to pair with this. And again, double check that part number to make sure it is the AF model and not the AE. This is my original uh, Ryzen 5 1600 and it is the AE. And of course, once again, check out my build guide for a walkthrough on how to build a system using this CPU for about $550. Next on the list, we have the $95, although on Amazon it's $92 right now, Ryzen 3 3200G. This is also an APU, hence the G in the name. So it's a quad core without SMT, so four cores and four threads. It does have better integrated graphics than the 3000G, and it has four actual cores, which will outperform the 3000G's two core, four thread set. Up. This is a 12 nanometer Zen Plus chip, just to be clear, but since you don't need a GPU, you can build a system with this chip for less than the 1600 AF. The gaming performance won't match what a dedicated graphics card can do though, so maybe consider something in between, like the new Ryzen 3100 available on May 21st. The Ryzen 3100 is a four core, eight thread CPU, which will sell for $100. And yes, it is a true third gen Ryzen 3000 series CPU with Zen 2 architecture, seven nanometer based. Third gen Ryzen 3000 CPUs are really nice, but the cheapest one for some time has been the six core, 12 thread Ryzen 30 3600, like I have right here, which is about $200. With the new 3100 and 3300X, you get the newest seven nanometer Zen 2 cores inside, which are faster on a per core level than 14 nanometer Zen or 12 nanometer Zen Plus. This means better gaming performance. These CPUs also support the latest PCI Express Gen 4 standard, as long as you use a 500 series AM4 motherboard along with them, which is nice if you're into high speed storage, but not a necessity for a budget build right now. So for this mid range segment of the budget segment of CPUs, you have the option of more CPU cores and threads with the 1600 AF, a nice balance of CPU power and integrated graphics in the 3200G, or the best single core performance for gaming and a bit of next gen compatibility with PCIe Gen 4 in the Ryzen 3 3100, again, coming soon. Let's finish off my list with the high end of the budget CPUs, which is the $120 to $150 price range. And there's a last minute change here that I'll get to in just a second. If you're gonna spend more than hundred bucks on a Ryzen CPU right now, you really should look at and consider the six core 12 thread Ryzen 3600 or 3600X. 3600X is available for 200 bucks right now and the 3600 is down to 175. 
but there are a couple options in between if you can't quite claw your way up to those SKUs. First, the Ryzen 3400G. I have the box for it right here, and this is currently AMD's best APU. It's got a four core, eight thread CPU inside along with integrated Vega graphics. Uh, again, a big step up from the 3200G in both CPU and GPU performance. It's $150, which seems very close to the 3600, but bear in mind, you'll need a discrete GPU with the 3600, so that adds to the cost. Personally, I prefer a discrete GPU for more gaming performance, so I'd rather get the 3200G for 100 bucks over the 3400G for 150 with a plan to upgrade down the line. But for some, the 3400G provides an ideal level of CPU performance with some gaming chops to boot. That said, I think AMD decided to make it end of life right as I was making this video, so that's kind of unfortunate. Mainly because it's not available in a lot of places, seems to be sold out. In places where it's sold out, uh, like Newegg, that have marketplaces, uh, they will be available on the marketplace for overpriced dollar amounts, and you should definitely not buy that. Uh, it is available at Best Buy. No, it's the right price at Best Buy, but it is currently sold out. Like I said though, just opt for the 3200G if you really need the integrated graphics to get you up and running, and then down the line, upgrade to the 3600 with a discrete graphics card is what I would point you to there if you can't find the 3400G. My final budget CPU recommendation is the Ryzen 3300X, the other 3000 series CPU launching on May 21st and it only costs $120 for four cores and eight threads with Zen 2 7 nanometer chiplets inside. This is of course just an example, not the actual CPU. It will run at a higher frequency out of the box than the 3100, and it should provide just a bit more single core performance for gaming. Again, since these CPUs haven't launched yet, I do recommend checking out some independent reviews once they're available, but if you're shopping now, you should definitely be taking these into consideration. Maybe hold off until they launch to make the final call on what you should actually buy, that way you can check out reviews as well. It is great to have Zen 2 based options though at this price, $100 and $120. But that is my CPU buyer's guide as it stands here in the second quarter of 2020. I hope this has helped you make your choice of CPU. And if you're ready to move to the next steps, I will put links in this video's description to my build guides, my parts list recommendations, and other helpful videos like system setup once you've actually put everything together. Also down there, you will find a link to my store at paulshardware.net where you can help support me and my video making efforts by getting yourself some sweet, high quality merchandise like this Zero Insertion Force shirt. Thank you for watching this video though, you guys. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.